Hi Ken here, Snake Valley Australia. Uh, just going to go through the menu for you, the on-screen display of the LN300 that's used by uh, Mellencam in the Micro, in the Micro Super, and in the Revolution Imager. So let's have a look. On the back of the camera, or if you have the little remote, you'll find five buttons. So if you press the center one, that'll bring up the menu. Just like that. Now, pressing the right button will scroll you to the right through the menu. And obviously the left one will take you left. If you press the center button, it'll select the one that you're on at the time. So at the moment we're on exposure, which is the first one. Press the center button and it'll open up that menu. If you press the up and down buttons, that'll allow you to scroll through the different parts of that section. So that's what the buttons do. So now what we can do is we'll go through them. The first one is the exposure. And we'll have a look in there. I'll give you the, an idea of basic settings you don't have to stick with these settings but these are the ones i use and quite a few other people do and you can fiddle with them change them around as you like but i try and keep the exposure on normal now there are other settings you can go to blc with backlight compensation wide dynamic range and hli now right, yeah. yeah there is settings in those as well you can go in and change them but you'll probably find normal is the easiest one to use and probably the best one to use then we go down to what's called sense up now what the sense up is is the length of your exposures for each video frame and I prefer not to use this one there is another method I'll show you in a second but what happens is, you watch, if I press the right button, notice at the moment it says off, if I press the right button, it goes to two times. Now watch what it's doing. I'm holding this camera in the pitch dark, under a desk. That is definitely not uh, two times one fiftieth of a second. Because this camera being PAL, in the micro you might have the NTSC version but I'm using the PAL at the moment so I'm referring to everything in PAL it runs at 1 50th of a second so at the moment we've times that by 2 so we're running it um, 2 frames at 1 50th of a second long each and it still should be pitch black but what the camera's doing now it's trying to compensate for the dark by lifting the brightness. Now if I wanted to look at a faint star, or sorry, a bright star, I point the telescope, I, tilt it, I put it on to times two, which should pick up the star nicely, but the camera wants to go brighter because it'll see the dark sky. So it will self-adjust, and the higher I go, the brighter it will try and get. Until it just goes ridiculous. So what I can do is I can take it down to off. How I prefer to use sense up, and many people do, is we go down to what's called lens. Okay, now if you press center button, you can go in there and change it. Now this one will stay where you set it. I have now got it on times two. If I do it to times four, it will get four times brighter. Eight times, it's double that. I can double it again, go 16. So I have total control of it. If it's too bright, I can back it down again. Now this is the one we use for our deep sky observing. You will probably find many objects will need 128 or more and you can go right up to 1024 
which in the PAL is 20 seconds. Now that's, uh, that's quite a good time to, to see most objects. You can pick up some really good faint objects, faint distant galaxies, faint nebula. But you'll find some objects like uh, M42, which is quite bright. It might look fine at 512, or you can even drop it down to 256. And it'll still look nice. Okay, now the other advantage of this one is we can drop it right back and go the opposite way into uh, fractions. Now this is really good for uh, planetary and lunar. One fiftieth of a second, one hundredth of a second, two fifty, one fifth five hundredth, one thousandth of a second, and we can just keep going. And we'll get to one hundred thousandth of a second. For general moon moon viewing, you probably want about one thousandth, maybe one five hundredth. And that's good enough for the moon. Some of the planets may want 1,250. But it'll hold what you set it at. So have a play around with that too. I find that if I want to look around and find an object, center an object, I get it up around 32. And that gives me pretty close to real time. But it's also bright enough to see the object. If it's a faint nebula, obviously you won't, but it works with globular clusters, star clusters, things like that. Okay, so let's go out of that one. We'll return out of that. So you click down one, return. And then we can go down one to the brightness level. Now I leave it around 65. Uh, yeah, you can go up by pressing the right button. Down with the left button. And that will give you a brightness level in the camera. No software involved yet. This is just in camera. So you can use this with a monitor. You won't need a, cam uh, a computer with a software program to change the brightness. Okay. AGC, you just up here. I preferably like it off. Get a lot less noise. And as you see, as soon as I turn it on, put it to low, it brightens it an awful lot. <laughs> um, but it will add noise, and I can go middle and high as well. There is a way around the noise, which I'll get to. but And that's by stacking, but I prefer not to stack. I just like the simple quick image, straight up. Okay, so when you've made all your settings here, all you've got to do is go down to the bottom, press your right button, until you get to save and exit, and just press it, and that'll save those settings for you. And if you don't save them, they will revert back to what they were originally, after about a minute or so. Okay, let's look at some other things. We press the center button again to bring up the menu. We go across to the second one. And that's our color. Again, preferably try and keep it in manual. What the manual mode will do, it will allow you to adjust the color. You can set your blue and your red to get your color balance right. When you're happy with those, return. There are other settings. Auto white balance, auto trace, but they don't allow you to just adjust the color. Manual does. Okay, so we go down, then we return back to our menu. We move across one more, and you're in the day and night mode. If you want color, leave it in day. If you want black and white, shift it across to night. Simple as that. So just leave it in day. Return. Then we move across one more in the menu and we go to effects. What this will do is you can freeze the frame. 
You can mirror the image. You can use the digital zoom. And then you can go in and change the zoom levels. So you come out of that one. I'll leave it off. So I don't need to zoom into things. Sharpness level. You can't go too high on that one because it starts to look really ugly. It just gets um, a bit too sharp. You can soften it by turning it way down and give you softer stars. So just find a comfortable level where you think it looks right. About 15 is okay. Stabilizer we don't use because the camera is not really shifting about trying to follow people. It's not a security camera. We're using it for Astro, so you haven't got cars and people moving. When you finish with those, down to the return, press that. The next one is motion. We don't need that because, like I said, we're not following motion. We're not trying to track car number plates and things like that. Next one is privacy. We don't use privacy mode, so don't bother with it. So we'll go down to leave it off and we'll go down to return. Up to the next one. And system. Now, these are some you can play with. The gamma. This will change the brightness of the, say, the background sky is the easiest way to put it. You can go down to 3. I personally prefer 4, uh, 0.45. There is a 6 and there's a 1. And 1 is probably another common one for some people to use. If you choose 1... It is best to just jump down here to monitor and change it to an LCD monitor. It does make a bit of a difference. But I prefer the look of a CRT monitor and gamma 4.5. To me it just gives it an overall better look. It makes your sky a little bit brighter, but that's okay. Picks up fainter detail. This second one in the list, 3D DNR. Now that's your internal camera stacking. Now you can go you, from zero, uh, you can go right up to five. You can stack five frames. And what that will do is that will reduce the, the amount of noise in your image. Because a lot of people like to use AGC. And AGC brings in noise. So you stack a few frames and that will eliminate the noise. Now there is a little trick that you have to learn if you're going to use this 3D DNR stacking you must go back here to your exposure to your AGC and you must turn it on. Low is good enough. Okay. Some people like medium, some people like high. It will get an image faster for you but there will be noise in it but it must be turned on at least somewhere so low is good enough then you can go down to your return go up again oops I picked the wrong one and I'll just go out of that one more across I go down to my stacking and I can select many frames I want to stack up to five and that will eliminate noise okay but like I said I prefer none and CRT and 0.45 DPC is your dead pixel correction. So auto if you want to get rid of them. You can turn it off. Doesn't matter. Lens correction. We don't use the lens. So we're not going to use that one. We go down to return. Come across. Oh, actually what I'll do while I'm here. I'll just go back to exposure. Turn that AGC off.
return and we'll continue now that was our system we did that gamma stacking which monitor appearance you want it to have and we come out of that one we go to the next one is set now all it's going to do is tell you a bit you know, if you want to change the language maybe the only one you may ever want to change is the language so we just jump out of there return and there's an exit on the end here you can use you can go down and save and exit and that will save all the settings you've just done now if you've think you've mucked your camera up or you've lost what you've done with all your settings and you're a bit scared that you you know oh, what have I done if you want to get it back to where it was go to initialize and just press the center button okay and what that will do is confirm and you can confirm yes and press the center I don't want to change it because I like it where it is so I'll just say no confirm return I'll go back up to save exit and I'll save and exit and that saves all those settings for me so when I open up my menu again I go into here I just check everything's okay I've got the sense up off the AGC off and my lens sense up is at 32 so that way I can center an object when I find the object I can just raise it up to wherever I want to look at it and at the moment it's on 1024 which is 20 seconds and I use that for many many objects okay so we can return and every time you do a setting just remember come down return exit save and exit now that's the one you want you, you don't have to go right down the end of the menu every time you'll find save and exit right there save it exit and you're done so that's how the menu works have a play around with it it's a lot of fun and uh, you'll find that you'll have favorite settings for different objects but don't feel scared to play with the buttons you can't break it uh, they're only uh, internal settings and like I said if you get a bit confused just go right to the end to where it says exit go down to initialize and reset the whole lot and start again so enjoy have fun with the camera and happy video astronoming astronomizing however you say it <laughs> okay <laughs> see you later <laughs>